and uh, a lot of sole proprietorships happen there. Yes. Do you really feel that we are conscious of the fact that the rights of children, even as they take part in family business? Um, if you critically looked at the African tradition and uh, the norms, work was considered to be uh, a very important responsible for training a child or their children into work. Now, when you talk of this, it was regardless of the age, as long as maybe somebody is nine, ten, eight, nine, ten and years, they could get involved in the family work. For example, cultivating land, uh, even running simple errands in case of uh, businesses. So in the African tradition, uh, people are not clearly mindful of, of uh, say, the limits in terms of age as to when somebody really should be exposed to work. It was more of a value to see somebody work. Actually, even in some of the uh, African uh, societies, people have argued that they have, when you come down to our small cottage industries, runners, uh, micro or mini businesses. In homes, in, in most homes, times. Yes, yeah. in homes. Labor, mm -hmm. you can call it, mm -hmm. as opposed to going in for more expensive uh, type mm -hmm. of labor. And, 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 uh, and, and the other very important aspect that I also want you to talk about and still in line with that is succession, because you want the family business to continue. Yes. So how do you do that without incorporating the children at a very tender age? Yes, actually, uh, in some, where some families have been known for certain businesses, for mm -hmm. example, a family is known to be an agricultural uh, family, mm -hmm. they are cultivators. So parents want to involve the children at such an early age, such that when the parents get to their advanced age, mm -hmm. there is somebody who can directly take over um, the, the, the businesses, can uh, take over the business of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be the decent side mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. child labor, mm -hmm. where the children are not really exploited, mm -hmm. but one would say it is more of a social obligation mm -hmm. for the children to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. And then there is a very thin line. Now, where is do we draw the line between children working and then also having child labor coming into play? Uh, child labor would become a concern, uh, especially if it leads to exploitation, mm -hmm. uh, where a child is told to do something that is beyond their capacity. Mm -hmm. For example, if it involves carrying heavy uh, uh, materials, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that that would be terrible. Mm. Uh, we've seen some children go to fetch water mm -hmm. from the well, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a, a child of uh, six years mm. is seen carrying a 20 liter jerry can. Mm. This mm. is about how many kilograms? So, uh, so you're, you're talking of over 20, 20 kgs? Of over 20 over kilograms. Kgs. I mean, that now mm. is bad because such a child maybe can carry really mm. about three liters, which mm. is about three kilograms. Mm. Or, uh, if I'm interpreting. So we have seen this uh, happen mm. in families. Now, the thin line, the line is really very thin, mm. but it is also about the, the consciousness that a particular family will have. But it is not based on the fact that they know that children have rights or not. Mm. Now, there is another big, big dilemma. You know, Africa as a continent has suffered this scourge of HIV. We've had um, a lot of uh, uh, political wars. Yep. This has left quite a number of children as orphans, yep. and several have had to fend for themselves at a very tender age. And uh, you look at a situation where there may not be an existing uh, system that will definitely absorb orphans, and uh, probably children that have been destabilized, and they learn at that very tender age to work. Yep. Where do we see these people now entering business without having their rights compromised? Because in any case, they don't have the families to live with. Yeah, I think that those are some of the challenges where you would expect uh, government, mm -hmm. and maybe we shall get time and talk a little bit about what has government done. Mm -hmm. But clearly, these children are left at the mercy of the community mm -hmm. or at the mercy of government. Mm -hmm. And indeed, the phenomena of HIV AIDS, the phenomena of wars in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, and other diseases that have robbed 
children of their parents uh, puts them in a very, very uh, 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 dangerous position. You will find families that are actually headed by children. A child who is uh, eight years is looking after another five of his siblings or her siblings. And they try their best. So this child has to look around, fetch water on the village, go and try and cultivate, get involved in sort of all sorts of works. Now this is where the exploitation sets in because they are at the mercy of whoever is going to give them what to do. Now, government, government should be able to come in and protect these children. How? Oh. Uh, government should be able to come in and uh, ensure that these children have access to good services, they have access to good schools, they have access to medical care, they, they have access to a meal or meals. Uh, the government of Uganda uh, has recently amended the Child Act Mm -hmm. in uh, 2016 mm -hmm. to criminalize child exploitation, okay. to criminalize uh, involving children in sexual activity, mm -hmm. and they have also put in place a national social protection program okay. to try and ensure that such vulnerable children are protected. Mm -hmm. They have increased their uh, inspection drives mm -hmm. from about 200 in uh, 19, 2014 mm -hmm. to about now 340. Now, Vincent, yes. between you and me, we know that we have a lot of very good laws that protect the uh, rights not only of children but even other workers. Do you feel that uh, the government of Uganda and uh, in particular, which is more or less similar to other African countries, has the capacity mm -hmm. to definitely be able to police or be able to cause a culture turn around and people to be able to effectively have child children enjoying their rights in business settings? No, my answer to that would be a no. Uh, to the extent that government, especially the one for Uganda and in Africa at large, they have limited resources. First of all, uh, in terms of, of, of funds to be able to, 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 to have adequate programs or implement adequate programs. Mm -hmm. So there's a clear uh, uh, observation that there are limited sources. That's number one. Number two, the people to involve or to engage in these programs also need to be trained to have the right attitude, to have the right skills, to be able to handle uh, such uh, situations. How so again, that is lacking. Mm. Yes. How can we sustain that in a government, uh, in, in, in a sectors like ours, which are largely privatized, where you know several businesses um, run by private owners and the government is just a regulator, which may not even have capacity, knowing the model we have in Africa, largely even in Uganda, the mean and small, several people have industries in the back of their households. And that's how they're able to task children on a daily basis and rights are violated in almost every other small cottage industry. How can the government have that capacity in a liberalized economic setting where individuals are running their businesses? I think the strong position of government should come through the legal framework. Mm -hmm. First of all, have laws in place to protect the children. But also, there can be an incentive for businesses, private businesses, mm -hmm that engage in the protection of children, mm -hmm. that engage in advocating, in advocacy mm -hmm. programs to ensure that there is no child labor, mm -hmm. uh, getting some bit of uh, uh, mileage mm -hmm. in terms of maybe tax reliefs, tax holidays, and so forth. So it could be a good CSR program mm -hmm. that a private firm can develop mm -hmm. as long as it supports uh, the protection of children's rights. Mm -hmm. I think that can happen now. That's the only way I think government can really influence the private sector, which is predominant mm -hmm. in our economies, to engage uh, in the protection of uh, child labor. Now, uh, yeah. the last one, Vincent. I know it may be quite difficult for us to, to, uh, to, 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 to eliminate this, but we can uh, be able to minimize and be able to mitigate some of the effects of child labor. 
How can we bring about a cultural turnaround, knowing that several of our African businesses are anchored on families and homesteads? How can we bring about a cultural turnaround in families, such that people can start seeing themselves as players in being, uh, in, in being protectors of children's rights, and also sowing seeds of doing ethical business practices? Yes. Uh, Godfrey, that's a bit of a tough one, <laughs> but, but I, I would like to quickly observe that um, the change in mindset is very important, mm -hmm. and this can only happen with good sensitization programs mm -hmm. through some of the cultural uh, systems we have. I'll give an example. Most of our local tribes are organized under different local leaderships. So this could be the point where that intervention can come in. Mm -hmm. uh, take an example of Uganda. We have the Buganda Kingdom, we have the Bunyoro Kingdom. These are local kingdoms with local leaders. So if it were introduced through the local leaders, as opposed to the public, what you would call the government leadership, then it would be very effective. Uh, you could have a major intervention where there is a theme running through where you say we must protect our children mm -hmm. from hard labor and from exploitation. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the theme for maybe a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Eventually it would influence the way people look at child labor and the way the people treat um, these uh, children. Also, the other intervention could be through our schools, through our universities, mm -hmm. where again, we can not only teach about the rights of children, but also encourage students to come up with programs and interventions to help solve some of the uh, challenges mm -hmm. uh, in society. Mm -hmm. But having said that, it requires a concerted effort, mm -hmm. knowing the kind of uh, environment we are living in, where there's a lot of poverty and people have to survive. So a child will tell you, but what can I do? I have no choice but to engage in this. So there's that kind of tension. Okay. It remains a dilemma. Thank you so much. And yes. I'd like to end it there, but I want to do agree that uh, there is a need for us to increasingly protect the rights of our children, uh, increase the awareness about ethics in practice, but at the end of the day, we also must be able to answer the million dollar question. How do we ensure we train our children to take over our businesses? How do we ensure that we meet our labor needs, yet we have these children around who must also be able to work, but at the same time walk the delicate work of ensuring we don't infringe on the children's rights and maintain that delicate balance. Okay, have a good evening, Vincent. Thank you very much, Godfrey.